Turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind. Goodbye pleasures of sin. 
I'll stay no longer with you. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. To my Let me lift my voice 
Oh my cares are past, home at last, never to rejoice. Oh my mind is up, and I would turn back, because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up, and I would turn back, because I want to see my Jesus
the dead, the lame can walk, the sick man is made whole. For the greatest miracle, the one you feel within your soul. There is power in His touch. Through His eyes, the blind can see. He has healing in His hand. Thank you to the Ajibolans, uh, brother and sister Ajibola, on that um, power in his touch. And it is our prayer that, that we touch each and every one of us tonight. Yeah. And prior to that, we have the choir of God, my mind made up, and then the orchestration, ancient world. It's our turn to sing together from our hymn book, CGS number 526. 526 will be our first song. You're welcome back to this sanctuary for our first revival service. We are looking up to the Lord to bless us in a special way. Addressing the ministers and choir and ministers and workers this morning, I did say that we don't need to wait for the whole of the camp meeting before we start collecting our blessings. Actually, there is no reason why you cannot say on the first day I want all my questions, all my issues resolved. And the Lord is able to do that. Even as we come here to do that tonight, we pray that the Lord is going to bless us. One welcome to our internet audience. I understood that you've not been having it easy. Well, we are in a valley here in um, a place called Mid Wales in uh, United Kingdom. It's in a valley and the internet connection has not been wonderful, so we want to apologize to you for that, but um, I understood from our audiovisual crew members that um, you can easily return to any of these services at your convenience um, via the YouTube if you cannot follow um, live. But I'm, I, I'm believing that um, they are doing a great job in looking after that, and hopefully you'll be online from time to time. 526, hear the footsteps of Jesus, is now passing by. We are going to take verses 1, 3, and 4. Verses 1, 3, and 4, and Brother Godwin is our song leader.
Jesus is definitely passing this way today. Yes. And 515 tells us the best friend to have is Jesus. Yes. He takes care of all the issues, sorts everything out. Oh, the best friend to have is Jesus. When the cares of life upon you roll, 515, 515, he will heal the wounded heart. He will strength and grace impart. Oh, the best friend to have is Jesus. We're going to take um, verses 1, 3, and 4. 1, 3, and 4. Our ladies will sing verse 3, and then all of us will sing verse 4 together. 1, 3, and 4. Oh, the best friend to Do you agree with me? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. 519. There's a place I love to tarry. Yes. When my soul is sad oppressed, tis alone with Christ my Savior, yes. where he bids me come and rest. We'll take verses 1 and 3. Verses 1 and 3.
kind of wonderful? Don't worry about it. I'm with you. That's all we need, isn't it? Amen. And once we get that assurance from Jesus, we can walk this old time way. 37, chorus 37 tells us where we're heading for. We are pressing toward the land of Canaan. Just beyond the brink of Jordan's tide. We've left the worthless fair of Egypt with its bondage, sin, and pride. But we, the land we seek must be by conquest. Battles must be fought and victories won. Giants must be slain and armies overthrown till before us stands not one. Yes, we'll take the land. Amen. Amen. we take that command from God to be strong 671 tells us there is nothing that can come across our way but that we will know that our anchor holds Amen. verses 1 and 4 Amen. though the angry surges roll on my tempest driven soul I am peaceful for I know wildly though the winds may blow I have an anchor safe and sure that can evermore endure, and it holds. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. Don't you just praise God for these wonderful songs? 671. 671. The last verse we sing, standing for prayer. As we remain standing with our eyes closed, Isaac Shodipe, we come forward and lead us in congregational prayer. O oh Lord, our Lord, Amen. we have just sang that our anchor holds. Yes. Our anchor holds. Yes. Lord, we thank you. Yes. We thank you for this glorious gospel. Yes. We thank you for your love and care. 
We thank you for this great camp meeting. In fact, for all the camp meetings and the many that you are still going to hold for your children. Thank you for that of Norway. Thank you for that of Poland. Thank you for this UK. Glory be to your name. You have started to bless. And you will continue to bless. Lord, we are sure that our anchor holds. Whatever happens, we have decided to follow Jesus. Help us, O Lord. Jesus, we want to stand. We stand that we may be frail. But you have all the powers. Jesus, the helper. Thank you for your servant. Reverend Isaac Adigun. Thank you for the way you have kept him. This is the 17th year. Thank God you made us to see this day. A prophecy was made by the man of God who was uh, passing the button that this young man, through him, the gospel will run. Amen. And this is what you have done. Amen. And you are going to do more. Amen. We thank you for his help us too. Amen. We thank you for the peace you have given us. Amen. We thank you for the unity. Amen. Glory be to your name. Amen. Lord, help us to forge your hand. Push Satan to nothing. Amen. Give us victory. Amen. Continue to save souls. Amen. Write more names in heaven. Amen. Those who are still coming, we remember them. Amen. Give them Johnny Messies. Oh Lord, give them Johnny Messies. When we we'll be going back with plenty of blessings, Amen. take all of us home safely. Amen. Give us our own campsite. Amen. Give us our own campsite. Amen. You gave us uh, the church in Peckham. Yes. You gave us that of Bexley. Yes. And you have done many more. Yes. We know you can bring something out of nothing. Yes. Lord, do it. Yes. And take out the glory. Yes. Heal all the sick. Yes. We shall praise your name forever. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes. Welcome to our revival service tonight. God bless you for coming. Even just as we've heard, we have um, our superintendent general, Brother Darrell, and his wife, Sister Debbie, is just um, going to one in the afternoon back at home, their home in Portland, and they should be leaving um, to catch their flight any time from now just as he announced himself when the camp meeting was closing last Sunday in uh, Portland. So let's bear them up in prayers that um, God, who gave all of us that went for that camp meeting journey message, he will do the same thing for them. Amen. And that by the special grace of God, they will be in our midst tomorrow, Amen. God willing. For our activities from tonight, I want to encourage you at the end of the service, take time to pray very well. We don't lock this place in case we have people that are new in our camp meeting. We don't close this place up. You can be here from this night till to tomorrow morning if you want to. We will encourage you at the end of the service to take time to pray until you receive something from God before you leave. Um, then tomorrow morning, Lord willing, just as you have on the schedule that we've given out, the, we usually have conducted prayer meeting. Um, for those that have been attending our camp meeting, they will all attest to the fact that um, it's, it's usually a wonderful time. So we want to encourage everyone to take advantage of our organized morning prayer meeting, which you have on the schedule um, in your hand. It starts at 5.30 through to 6.30, and we want to encourage you to take advantage of that. Then the choir and orchestra practice, just as it is on the program at 30. Bible teaching, the first Bible teaching for this camp meeting will be at 10 <clears throat> in the morning. It is our culture here 
that we come early to pray in the church, not to talk, please. This has turned to be a church, just as we do at our home churches. We come in early, not just at the uh, start of the meeting. We kneel down, if we can kneel down, to pray down the power of God upon our lives as well as upon the service. Um, so that God will give us a good time. So we want to encourage people, when you come in here in preparation for the service, please be sure you take time um, to pray. So 10 a.m. in the morning will be the first Bible teaching, and then all other things that will follow just as we have on our um, hand bill that has been given to us. An arrangement has been made for the cleaning and um, duty at the dining hall. Um, it has been decided that we now go branch by branch as against the names that are usually pasted. It seems that it's not working very, very well. But we know that um, if you go branch by branch, um, we hope that will improve. So for tomorrow, Monday, it's going to be the Peckham branch. And that means Peckham branch. Peckham branch. I'm from Peckham. So my team is working tomorrow. So I don't want anybody to come to me and take plates from me if I'm packing plates. Don't even try to call. Is my branch working? Or if you see Brother uh, um, Isaac Shodipe, older than me, an elder in the church, if you see him pushing trolley, just say, can you please come and pack my table? <laughs> that is fine. It's Peckham branch turn. Is that all right? I won't announce the remaining branches. But let's, let, let's, let's stick to the Peckham branch. For tomorrow, they will serve us and look after the dining um, in the afternoon as well as in the evening. Um, so if you see any Peckham branch member, sitting down to eat, let the person know you should be working. Unless, of course, the Peckham branch member says that I've been asked to go and sit down. And we have people that are organizing things there. If we are too many, which I think we will, and um, I will not accept if they ask me to go and sit down, I would like to work. So, but I know some of us will be asked to go and sit down. So those who are asked to go and sit down can sit down. But if you see anybody who has not been asked to go and sit down, you are from Peckham, get up and go and be working. That's what you should be telling them. Okay, we continue with the service and then we listen to the um, first special, My Soul Magnifies. And then we have two minutes testimonies from any branch. Any branch, two minutes testimony. Uh, we do that for a few testimonies, and then we have um, the last special, which will be given by Brother Solomon, the leader of our group from Denmark. We give us the last special before the word of the Lord from Brother B.C. Ojulaja, um, our visiting minister from our branch church at Wharton, New Jersey, USA. We bring the word tonight. God bless you. Oh, yeah. 
spirit rejoices, my spirit rejoices, for he has done great things for me. thank God um, today um, for giving me the privilege um, giving me a second chance to be alive and to stand before you to say that, to declare that Jesus Christ is good. Amen. I thank him for saving me when I was a child and sanctifying me. I praise him uh, one day that he helped me to experience the power um, of Holy Ghost and uh, since then as a child God has been helping me um, recently without wasting time uh, God has done miracle in my life in March um, I was in church on Saturday uh, but and on Sunday but on Monday I was in the hospital um, there was no hope they did every test they couldn't find anything but you know, as I had no hope of being alive anymore, I thought I would no longer be able to work because my head and my body were not connected anymore. I couldn't stand for so many days. But one day, without hope, Jesus came and healed me yeah. and connected me back. Yeah. And uh, in June again, uh, I was so shocked that I went for a women's prayer by faith. I was sick, but I went for the prayers um, on coming back, and that was the end. Um, I couldn't move again. I was in severe pain that I cannot describe. But you know, I refused to go to hospital. I said, I'm tired, but you know, as um, we finished a funeral, right at the funeral, I found myself in the hospital. And before I know, at the reception, that was the end. I almost passed out, but you know, when they checked, they said I should thank God because there was no, they were surprised that my heart was not struck off and I was able you know, to come back home. But you know, they said I mustn't go to Portland. The first doctor said, the consultant said, even a brother in this church who is a doctor said, I cannot go to Portland. I said, I want to put God to test. Well, who is real, God or doctor? I want to see. I will go in that flight. Let me die. But you know what? God took me in that flight to Portland. I saw myself coming out, and I saw myself in Portland. And you know, coming back, I knew that God has done something. I saw myself coming back again in the plane, and I am standing here alive. I just want to declare that Jesus Christ is real. Yeah. I just praise him. Yeah. 
at the end of the youth service, I took a fall behind the piano there. Not many people knew about it, but my heel got caught on the step and I just fell down. And as if, it was as if something in my spirit had told me that Tosin, as you step down, something's going to happen. But I didn't know what to expect. So I was just on the floor and then I was just thinking and then I just, I couldn't, I don't know. Anyway, I got up and then I was just thinking and I realized that for a few weeks leading up to a cam meeting, I realized that the devil had been putting thoughts in my head that just confused me spiritually. I just didn't know where I was. And I realized that even that fall, the devil had tried to counter God's blessings for me. And even for all of us, I know the devil has been trying many schemes, many trying, trying to come in many different forms and, and ways to manipulate us to think that um, maybe God's blessings aren't there for us. So I pray, I just want to testify so that everybody can know that the devil's plans won't work, that God will shower his blessings on all of us and that we should be ready to receive tonight. thank God that he brought me here to this year's camp meeting. He saved me in 2010. He sanctified me in 2012 in this camp meeting there on the altar. And he baptized me with the Holy Ghost this year on um, January the 6th. And it was a really very nice experience for me. And I was so happy and I was praying and my mom didn't know that I was praying and I didn't know that my mom was praying in a different room. And so when she called me, she saw that my face was just with tears and so she asked me what happened and I couldn't tell her because I suddenly saw just Jesus and I just felt that something happened in me and I was so happy and I started shivering and tears were flowing and then I also realized that during my prayer I was praising God so different and I was so happy that I also um, spoke in a different language and also when I told my daddy I was still shivering and I was so happy it was such a nice experience for me and I also want to thank God that um, every year when I came to this camp meeting I am always caught cold but I want to thank God that this year I came here healthy and by God's grace I will go back home healthy in Jesus I want to give glory to God for the power that is in his precious blood I want to thank him for saving my soul a wretched sinner. I want to thank him for sanctification and baptism for Holy Ghost and fire. I cannot thank God enough for what he has done for me. God picked me up from nowhere. He has worked on me, still working on me, but I could see him working on me. And I give him glory for that. I thank him for my family. They've been rocked behind me. I thank him for my work. Last Wednesday, I was so jittery. I was so disturbed. I am... Um, a panic attack because I had to do a professional exam and my, I'm, I was, I'm not as bright as I used to be anymore. It was a big challenge, but God came to me with me into the exam hall. I told him, God, I don't know what to do. He was there with me. He helped me through the practicals, through the theory, through everything. He gave me total victory. I got almost 90% out of the marks and I give him glory for that. I, want, I just want to give him glory because he's been a good God. He, every aspect of my life he has touched. And I could see him working. I could see God working in my life. And I thank him for that. I just want you, children of God, I want you to pray for me. That God will uphold me even to the end. That God will keep me. I want God to keep me. I want to serve him. Because I know that from when I was little that God loves me and I love him. And he really wants to help me. Please, I don't want to go back. Help me, pray for me that I will see him face to face before I see them. Never busy, always on the line. You may hear from heaven almost 
any time. Sister service, free for one and the all. When you get in trouble, give this royal line a call. Telephone to glory, oh, what joy divine. I can see the current moving in the line. Built by God the Father for His love and the own. We may talk to Jesus through this royal telephone. There will be no charges, telephone is free. It was built for service, just for you and me. There will be no waiting on the royal line. Telephone to glory always answers just in time. Telephone to glory, oh what joy divine. I can see the current moving in the line. Built by God the Father for His love the and the own. We may talk to Jesus through this royal telephone. If your line is grounded, and connection true has been lost with Jesus. Tell you what to do. Prayer and faith and promise mend the broken world till your soul is burning with a Pentecost of fire. Telephone to glory, oh what joy divine I can see the current moving in the line Built by God the Father for his love the and the own We may talk to Jesus through this road Telephone. Will you talk to Jesus through this royal telephone? I will talk to Jesus through this royal telephone. We must talk to Jesus through this royal telephone. Thank God for that uh, free line that we can call anytime. I'm not sure you'll be able to call the queen. The line is not free. But thank God, this line is free. In fact, he promised before you call, he will answer. Yes. Glory to his name. Yes. We'll take our text tonight from Isaiah 
chapter 12, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3. It reads, Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the well of salvation. If I want to say that in another way, I'll say the well of salvation produces joy. Yeah. When you draw water out of it, it will always be joy. Yeah. Joy is a precious commodity. That's what people are looking for all over the world. They're looking for joy. But unfortunately, it's so sad that they are looking for it in the wrong places. Those places are usually the wells of destruction. All the drugs, the pleasures of life, they won't produce joy it will not be lasting joy. But the well of salvation produces lasting joy. Water is an essential thing for our body. As a matter of fact, if I recollect correctly, most of our body is water. It is necessary for our survival. We can't do without it. In um, many places, particularly in the land of Israel at that time, the source of their water is from wells. It still happens to be so in many places around the world. Where I live in the United States, we get our water from wells. In the southern part of New York, Long Island, it doesn't have many rivers, maybe one or two. Uh, the waters are gotten from wells and they go to a depth very deep where you have um, water that's always available. And so, but the wells have to be dug. If you need water, you have to dig the well. That does, that's not a lazy man's job. That tells us that if we want to, if we want this joy that we're talking about, we should be prepared to dig. Yes. And camp meeting time is a good time to oh, dig. Yes. Oh, yes. That's true. You know, digging is not a three-minute job, especially if you want pure water. If we want uh, adulterated water, water that's not pure, well, maybe you can dig a few feet, like three feet to the ground, you get some water, but I assure you it's going to be muddy water. You don't want to drink that. So, you need to dig and dig deep. Even with all the technology that we have today, Digging is not fun. It takes quite some time to get to that depth where you can get pure water to drink. We want to ask God to help us tonight Amen. to dig. 
By now, you should be realizing what digging is. Digging is prayers. Spiritually, that's how we dig. In the days of Abraham, the dog was. It's a very precious um, uh, holding to have a well that produce, produces good water. Abraham dug wells, Isaac dug wells, and even the succeeding generations, they, they, they did dig wells. In Genesis 26, verse 18, we read something like this. Genesis 26, verse 18. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names which his father had called them. When you want to dig, you want to dig in the right places. You know, it would be unfortunate after putting so much effort in, digging, digging, maybe to 100 feet or more, you finally find out that you don't have water there. That's because you are digging in the wrong place. If you dig in the wrong place, you will not get water. Sometimes you get water, but the water is not good water. Maybe it's sour water. That's a wasted effort. People are trying to dig today in wrong places. People are digging in places of their own ideas. Imagine Isaac going to dig in the lot of Lot. You know what that, that's going to, uh, what that is going to produce. Lot was by that time already in Sodom. People are going to the wrong places, places of amusement, to dig their waters. And maybe even in this room, people are digging in the world in, in places where, uh, uh, as it were, it's a rocky place, they will not get water. They will go, people, you know, uh, go, go to places of their own, they, they have their own ideas in their hearts, and they think, oh, if I do it this way, Oh, I surely will get what I'm, I'm going to get. You know, for example, you have pride in your heart and you are digging. You are probably not going to get much result. Or you have anger in your heart. Or you have unforgiveness in your heart. As a matter of fact, Jesus tells us, you won't come to the altar, you want to pray. You remember you have something against your brother. He says, don't waste your time praying. Don't waste your time digging. Go first and be reconciled with your brother. After you have done that, come back and pray. You're going to hit pure water. You know, also when we dig, you have to get some things out. When you first of all dig, you probably meet with rocks, rubbles, uh, muddy water. You have to get them out of, uh, out, of, out of that hole and continue to dig and dig until you finally hit, hit the water. When we are digging, when we come to pray spiritually, we need to get those things out of our hearts. Those things that will block the way from us getting results, we need to get them out of our hearts. 
You know, Isaac, he learned by experience that wherever his father dug, he gets good water there. You know, the, 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 the devil will come. You know, we, we're told in that text, that the portion I just read, that the Philistines came and filled those wells. I want to ask you, how is your joy tonight? For us, once you had joy, but the Philistines came and filled that well. What you need to do is dig again. Dig in the same place. Don't go to a place where they will tell you there is an easier way to get the result you want. Oh, perhaps they tell you it's not that hard. Oh, you just believe in your heart. Just raise up your hand. Oh, just claim it. Well, those are part of the equation. But you need, first of all, to do some things in order to get results. The Bible lets us know that we need to confess our sins. He said if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you don't want to confess your sins, you're not going to go anywhere. None of us is born righteous, but the Bible assures us that the wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, as we had in the morning, our fathers have laid, out the, laid down the foundation. Like Paul said, he said, he said, I laid the foundation. Us is just to build on it. We do not need to lay another foundation. The foundation is already laid for us. It, is, it has been tried and tested. It has been tried and tested. You know, don't the Bible let us know that there is a way that seems good unto man, mm-hmm. but the end thereof is death. That's right. But Jesus said, I am the way. Yes. Yes. The truth and the life. Yes. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Oh, yes. You want to get to heaven? Come through Jesus. Oh, yes. That well is at the foot of the cross. Oh, yes. John chapter 7 verse 38 tells us He that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Do you want real joy? Believe on Jesus as the scripture has said. Come repenting. Come confessing. Come uh, believing. Pray until you have a witness. It says the spirit of God beareth witness with our spirits that we are the sons of God. Have you had that witness? If you need a witness tonight... You can have it at the altars. In so many places, the altars no more exist. But it has worked for us. It will continue to work for us. When I came to Jesus, I came to the altar that day. Not even believing I was a sinner. But thank God he was faithful. He showed me I was a sinner. He showed me a movie clip of something I did and I thought nobody knew about it. 
I didn't know God has uh, the records. You know, God has your record. He said the book will be opened. Another one will be opened that contains the sins of men. And men will be judged out of, out of those things that were written in the book. But those things can be erased Amen. tonight Amen. by the application of God, of Jesus' blood. It's, it can happen in a twinkling of a second. You know, with God's help, you don't have to spend too much time digging. With the help of the Spirit of God, you can hit it in a minute. Yes. If you believe, Amen. if you believe in your heart, you know that woman was looking for water that would satisfy her soul. But she was looking in the wrong places. The Bible let us know that he, she had had five husbands. She tried one, that didn't work out. She got another one, that didn't work out. And then the third one, and then the sixth one, fifth one. Even after the fifth one, it still didn't work out. And Jesus asked him, where is your husband? Ask her. And she said, I don't have any husband. But she just said, you said the truth by saying that. You've had so many husbands. The one that you are with right now is not even your husband. He said, I she said, I perceive you are a prophet. Our fathers, you know, they drank from this well. But you say, you have some water to give me. That's better than this well. The, Jesus said to him, woman, believe in me. The hour has come. Yeah. When those who call upon God will call that upon him uh, in spirit and in truth. Oh, yeah. You know, camp meeting is a time for us to dig. Yeah. Fellowship is fine. But, the dig, but seeking God is more important. Yeah. And we seek God by calling upon him, by, you know, confessing our sins. Oh, even if we have had the well before flowing and you, you, you hardly felt happy lately, just dig those wells again. Amen. Go to the right, the first place where you dug that first well and dig again. And God is going to satisfy you. He will satisfy every longing heart tonight. It will bless every soul that's ready, oh, to dig. Oh, come to the altars. The altars are open, and God will bless you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity for us tonight to dig and to be saved. Save tonight. Sanctify, O oh Lord. Heal the sick. Answer every prayer. Come down tonight. Do something wonderful. We want to leave this place with joy. Real joy. True joy. Genuine joy. Drinkable waters. Do this for us and much more Amen. as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.